What's happening YouTube, it's your homie yes, Dot coming back at you with another video. And today's video is all about a deck profile continuing Megatron week for my version 2 of the deck. Now why version 2? If you guys check my uh, video, video previously, I have a version 1 of this deck playing against a good friend that I uh, just ended up making a, a good new friend I should say in um, Alan Goodard on the uh, Transformers webcam page. Definitely join that page if, and uh, you know potentially look into investing in a webcam because that's a, definitely one of the new angles we are able to uh, you know uh, use utilize to play you know people that all across the world instead of having to wait till a big tournament to all meet up so shout out to alan gooder with his very cool deck i did not realize that every character with the heads all equaled 25 stars and when i say that i mean mind wipe with his head vorath horrible with his head kreb and then uh, Fangry with his head Briscoe actually equals 25 stars. Two more shout outs I gotta give out before I get started with this deck profile and why this deck profile was inspired or this deck in general. You know, for, of course I've looked into wanting to play Megatron since he was first revealed. And uh, two things, again, shout out uh, to Sean Rawlings. He inspired me the most to play this deck because I played against him on our live stream this past uh, two Sundays ago. So check out, I think the couple of videos ago of um, like a four and a half hour stream of us playing a whole bunch of different matches with different decks and uh, he was playing the revenge stratagem I think with Kreb and Megatron and seeing the card in, in previews it's like okay that's cool but eh, it costs too much and you're kind of like put off by it but I swear but this game is so unique because it's like you could judge a card by just reading it but then when you actually see it in action it gives you an entire new scope on like oh wow okay it's actually really good because of how free it is and when i say how free it is we're talking about the stratagem the stratagem pretty much acts as a weapon so if you don't have a weapon it pretty much is a weapon in itself and we'll talk about that when we actually get to the character but uh when we get to the stratagem but talking about the character lineup, we have Megatron, Fallen Hero, of course, and uh, Decepticon, Quake, Ground Assault. So this is a new way for me to play tanks in this wave. Yes, as you can see, it's two wide, but it's technically four wide because we have uh, the you know two Titan Masters, which means they both have heads. And let's talk about Megatron first because he is the early to mid game star of the deck, and then Quake is the cleanup. So we'll talk about Quake at the end. So we have Megatron, and what's really cool about this, the Fallen Hero from Wave 5, we actually have this full suite of cards he can use. And what I mean by that, you can tell by the artwork, they all are, you know, matching in a sense. We have the Revenge Stratagem, which is two stars. Of course, Megatron himself was 11 stars. That makes him 13. And then it makes him 16 stars with the uh, Brave Head that he has as well, the Doomshot. And Doomshot also, of course, has Brave himself when he pops off. So what's really cool about this is the alt mode effect and what his alt mode says is when this defends and you flip at least an orange do one damage to the defender so this is where i have to give my second shout out the other thing that made me look into wanting to play this deck was uh carl um i forgot his last name carl e carl Indris or something like that excuse me if i butchered your last name bro but uh he's techno majors on uh, youtube and he was also on the live stream watching some of our games commenting every here every now and then and while he was while we were playing you know when the megatron deck was on the uh the table he said something that really resonated me and uh, he said a lot of things that resonated with me because he's very smart. He's very articulate with the things he, um, you know, in building decks and how he plays and things like that. Very good player. Uh, he mentioned to me, the more times, the more I look at Megatron, the more I feel like he doesn't flip until he's about to die or some, some, somewhere along those lines. And when he said that, it made me think because, yeah, that's true. Uh, you know, escape route and um, any of rollout and things like that do not and even hunker down don't work on getting megatron back to his alt mode unfortunately which would obviously be really good those cards all say flip the character to bot mode but in fact these or from bot mode to alt mode these characters are in fact uh have a body mode so they won't be able to flip flop now rapid conversion is showing off you will be able to do so but i do not think it's worth playing rapid conversion in here just to flip my character and not get any when you flip to this mode type effect but speaking of when you flip to this mode type effect when you actually flip into his bot mode this is a uh, very unique and the fact that oh, the head's kind of pop there we go pop the head out more aesthetically pleasing there uh when you flip to his body mode excuse me uh he gets plus two attack until the end of the turn so what's really cool about that is the fact that he's one of the few characters in the game that when you flip to bot slash body mode they do an effect normally on most characters especially the tanks it's when you flip to alt mode they trigger their special effect which is where power cards like hunker down comes into play really nicely because you get a lot of value out of hunker down when you have a demolisher and your megatron or whoever and you flip all of them to alt mode uh you know impact or give everybody bolt one uh demolisher draw two if you have two other tanks etc you know so but this is very interesting in the fact that um you know those cards don't work with him in that sense anyway and uh he has a when you flip to body mode effect so he gets it right away so that made me think it's like well yeah uh you know carl was right because it's like 
it's awkward when I first played this in the one deck I had. Like it was like a three wide deck with Kreb and uh, Quake and like Sky Shadow Tank or something like that. And it was when you attack with him, he's very vulnerable in that mode. And then on your next turn, your flip density would be weird because unless you had hunker down to like flip somebody else, like the the model show or whatever, I would want to flip the Megatron down. And the point being, it was just the flip intensity was a uh, the flip uh, equity rather was uh, really difficult. But the point of him in this deck is to actually just keep him in alt mode for potentially at least at least the first round. I would hope that um, some games I've actually played, though, against, especially against aggressive decks, he wasn't able to stand up. Now, of course, he, he has Brave, so you have to attack into him. What that also means is his burn effect will trigger just about every time because this deck is heavier slanted on the orange. So every time I flip an orange, I will deal damage back to the opponent. A section that I want to add that I keep forgetting to add, but I will make sure I add it to this video, is a uh, strengths and weaknesses section. So this will give you another angle of looking at the deck. Some of it might be obvious, but I'm going to give these uh, rankings, you know, five out of, uh, excuse me, between zero and a five ranking five being the strongest in terms of what this deck can potentially be good at and then obviously you know the closer we get to zero is its weaknesses and talking about his stratagem again his stratagem is pretty much a weapon depending on how many damage counters he has on him he will get bold so if he has one through five damage counters he has bold one if he has six through ten damage counters he has bold two if he has 11 plus damage counters only he has bold, bold three so you're probably looking in a range of being in the between the one and ten damage range to have bold and one bold two if he's able to get high enough to have that bold three and then also flip to his body mode to get the plus three. He's seven bolt three, which is insane already to start. And then, you know, if you have a weapon on him already, you know, you have this as a quote unquote weapon. And the reason why I say this is a weapon, because obviously when you have bolt, like this is like a, either to have either having a combat dagger, a flamethrower or a permanent power punch on your uh, guy. So you could play a weapon comfortably for the turn and then still attack with him and get value out of that. So, and then about talking about uh, Quake, Decepticon Quake is a new character out of, uh, also out of Wave 5, Titan Masses Attack. And, you know, I looked at him first and I underestimated him because, I mean, I think I would underestimate anybody that had a body without a head. And he looks very like, eh, okay, that's cool at first until you give him a head, obviously, like Grax or anything like that. And then you're like, okay, this guy is kind of ridiculous. And then you have him in a deck like this where you can't attack him. You have to attack the Megatron. And then you also still have to attack the Doom Shot before you can finally get to Quake, which also means that if Megatron dies here, everybody takes one damage from Quake's bot mode side. If the Doom Shot dies, everybody takes one from Quake's bot mode side. And what exactly am I talking about? Well, his bot mode is crazy. We're actually going to flip-flop this and talk about this in the reverse. Notice I did didn't talk about alt mode yet uh when this or another character's ko do one damage to each other enemy so he will not take the damage but every other character will so what's cool about one thing about the sm small synergy about this effect is it's also really good on uh megatron to let's say he only has bold one and i deal some direct damage like hank came and crash some outside of combat and kill one of their characters well that character will die and then um you know i can uh well first of all you can put the one damage on uh Megatron to get him closer to his next bold threshold. So if he had five damage counters, but well now he has six because of the Kamian crash. And then, you know, now he'll have bold two when he attacks. Um, this effect, this effect is insane. I didn't think it was that serious when it first came out, but you know what? A continuous arm hovercraft or strafing run or whatever you want to call it on every character is actually nuts. And it's actually kind of annoying to play against. And um, it's probably even more annoying because, again, Megatron has uh, Brave times two, you know, once he dies and again, once Doomshot dies. Uh, he has a respectable five attack and two defense. And in his alt mode, which we're going to switch back to, oh, by the way, let's talk about the crab head real quick. He has the crab head. So he only has 10 health. But the fact of the matter is you have to go at Megatron so hard through a excuse me, uh, so much throughout the game that by the time Quake comes on the field, the, even the playing field should be evened out, you know, hopefully one-on-one -on -one at that time. But the Decepticon Quake's alt mode is while this is your only character on the battlefield, he has plus two attack. So this is your end game. You flip him back to his alt mode where he's stronger uh, in terms of his defense. So I have three defense here and then six base attack. And then, you know, whatever weapons you have on him, obviously he's definitely going to be hitting like a tank. So again, that's the idea of the deck. And then last but not least, we also have to talk about the stratagem. Now, the stratagem is what I'm kind of on the fence about, but then at the same time, once you see how the Deculus is articulated, it, it actually ends up working out because, yes, 10 health on Quake is very weak, and this actually was Briscoe at one point, but I actually wanted to try to isolate and uh, take out some other cards out of my deck to add some other ones, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we get there. But this is the uh, one-star stratagem. As long as you started the game with all Decepticons, simply put, you can have up to two extra star cards of orange cards. Uh, I'll be showing you, obviously, what that card is once we get to the deck profile. And without further ado, enough talking from me. Let's jump right into the deck list. All right, guys, to start off the deck list, we are going to start off with one of the uh, best cards in the deck. You already know, you guessed it, the card I usually start all my profiles off with, Peace Through Tyranny. Peace Through Tyranny is a, um, you know, always been an insane card. Megatron's on the cover. Megatron, we're playing that in the deck, so it's very, excuse me, very fitting. And 
Um, you know, you can also use this in conjunction. It's very powerful to use if your Megatron's about to die. Instead of them killing it, you can kill it yourself with Peace to Tyranny and take an extra turn. So, and then on top of that, when you kill your Megatron, your Quake's Altmost side will also trigger then as well. And you get to kind of you get to kind of control the tempo of, of the game in that sense. So when you have your Megatron tapped and you know he's gonna die one more hit, maybe you could Peace to Tyranny it and then get your Doom Shot in there with a potentially you know strong weapon and then get in with your Quake and kind of potentially take control of the game that way. And even then. When you're tapped out, your opponent has to still attack the Doom Shot. And again, once the Doom Shot dies, you would trigger Quake again. So we're doing a lot of Earthquaking around here with this deck. And uh, it definitely can get a crazy chain reaction, especially against other aggressive decks. But not too much more to say about this. You don't mind flipping it. You also don't mind having one of these in your hand to uh, potentially play on uh, one of your Titans. Next up, we have one of the other best cards in this deck. One of probably my favorite card in this deck, Hunker Down. Hunker Down, of course, is a very good card. Uh, it's a blue icon to kind of offset the fact of its power level. If it was orange, that'd be crazy. But uh, you know, flip two of your or flip all of your uh, tanks from bot mode to alt mode, and then any of your tanks that don't have armor on it already, put one on them. Now, something to articulate with this card. Some of you may be thinking, hey, you can't do that because you just said you can't flip characters from body mode to alt mode with rollout, etc. Well, that's true. But you can hunker down and then play the secondary portion of this effect, which is, which is to still put an armor on the character. So that also goes for start your engines with the card deck. Chrome Dome, for example, is a card Titan Master. He cannot flip from body mode to alt mode with start your engines, but if he's already in alt mode, you'll just simply flip the rest of your cards from alt mode to, excuse me, from bot mode to alt body mode, or <laughs> now I'm confusing it, bot mode to alt mode, and then untap your chrome dome if you so choose. So keep that in mind. So the turn sequences with this deck, usually first turn, um, whether I open with hunker down or not, I will not flip any character on my first turn and I'll simply attack with Megatron, simply because if my on my second turn I draw hunker down and I happen to have uh, strong weapons in the scrap. I might not even flip anybody on the first go around period But if I happen to have two armors in the scrap or at least one because you want to have your Megatron survive as long as possible Before Quake has to really get in and do some heavy uh, Lifting you want to be able to hunker down without flipping your Quake first then flip your Quake back because there might be a position where I mean it's probably not that big of a deal to just go flip Quake and attack with Megatron And then if you do happen to draw hunker down, it's like oh, okay Well, I'll just flip back and then hunker down your first turn of flip sequences Isn't that big of a deal when it comes to hunker down and just in general but you want to keep in mind throughout the game that uh, even if you have, like I did have one situation where I had both characters in body mode, and unfortunately I wouldn't be able to obviously hunker down both. So Megatron was more valuable in that sense, so I flipped and got one of the uh, armors back to put on him. And it was more important to have it on him anyway because, again, they have to kill him and Doom Shot before they can even get to Quake. So having an armor on Quake doesn't do much when they have so much to get through with your uh, Doom Shot and um, Megatron. Next up, we have one of the premier cards in any orange black deck. It's the new Supercharge, and it caters to having a black icon. So you lose one of the bold from Supercharge, but you gain an additional icon in the black icon. It's, of course, it's great to uh, flip on attack. And despite your opponent having, you know, their high defense or whatever they end up having, and let's say they're still playing hidden fortification or their tough armors, you at least guarantee at least Pierce one. Of course, we know about the black icon at this point. But for anybody new to the channel, welcome to the channel, by the way. And I'm doing all that backwards, <laughs> out of order. But, uh, you know, if you're a Megatron fan, it's your first time clicking on the channel because you want to see this deck profile and you're not familiar with the new set yet potentially or any of the, the black icons in general and of course we have one of the premier cards in the uh set as you guys know or not in the set but in any orange black deck in fight for position of course fight for position is like supercharged but it loses one bold from the text box and adds a black icon to the uh to the icon section so that way of course when you flip it on attack you at least guarantee at least one pierce uh, against any heavy blue deck or uh, any deck in general Next up, we have uh, three magnetic dysfunction right now. This card is just kind of helping the uh, area of effect damage, AOE damage with the uh, Quake. You know, especially if your opponent's playing like a Perceptor deck with like two other Decepticons. Well, Perceptor, the main guy you want to kill anyway, is still going to take two. Just in general, doing that spread damage on all your opponent's characters. And then if you also get a kill on, you know, one of your opponent's characters with Quake or in general, a kill wherever with Quake then you know that triggers the effect again and dealing one damage and one damage doesn't seem like a lot but if you're new to direct damage and never really played it before trust me one damage is a ton and uh and it's funny that's a ton because it's the minimum you can take on a character but uh, one damage is a lot and especially if your opponent has an autobot so if also if they're playing with the new ruling if they're playing fangry with parsec they will take two damage on that parsec and uh yeah so that's things to definitely uh, pay attention to if they're playing the decepticon uh, titan master and they have a autobot head with it very powerful card Next up, that's it for our three of's. For our two of's, we have uh, two even the score. Now, even the score is the star card that I am playing in conjunction with the stratagem, the villain of spotlight. 
Um, this card is very good. I think it's gotten better. And of course, uh, it was decent and you know notable in Way 4, but not as playable or uh, relevant. But now with these stratagems allowing you to play not just one, because if the stratagems weren't a thing, I could just fill my deck in with one even the score. But with this card, this allows me to play two even the score, thus allows me to see it potentially more often based off percentages, because obviously because I have two in the deck. And uh, it's a very good card. So it's a secret action. And uh, when, when, one, when one of your Decepticons get KO'd, any damage that is spilt over, you deal back to your opponent. So for example, Megatron flips to his bot mode, or his, I keep saying bot mode, it's gonna be a while before I get used to that. But uh, when he flips to his body mode, he has less defense, which means he's a lot more susceptible to being KO'd. Let's say he only has two damage, two health left on him, and then my opponent doesn't wanna go too hard into it because they know they can, over, they can kill it, but they still have like a solid base eight attack, or not base, but they have a solid like eight attack coming into you. Well, I have two health left and one defense. So minus my two health and my one defense from their eight, that's five. So that five damage actually reflects or is clap, or clap back. Is uh, Yeah, that's a good word for it. Yeah, you clap back. You're clapping back damage with this card. So that's damage unexpected for your opponent to be able to take. Let's say that character they sent out is a character that have five or less health anyway, and they want to send that out because they know Doomshot has to, because after the, this gets KO, Doomshot has to attack to that character. All of a sudden, even the score kills that character we both go down together aka you know megatron being the fallen hero that he is it's perfectly fitting for this deck especially with his brave and everything and uh you kill that character you'll trigger quake and you can also order the effects and uh by the way i gotta go back for a second because one thing one important thing i missed about quake that i need to talk about along with octone and i think octone and quake are the only two that matter for this sake that i can think of there's a really powerful ruling that came out with the uh titan masters that make things more relevant when it comes to killing the body with the head. Now, when I, when I say that, I say that for especially like characters like Volrath and Parsec because they both have one damage or one health, excuse me. So for example, if Quake kills a character with Volrath or Parsec on it, I can order my effect, and the same with my head, if my head pops off, I can order my effect in order to make the one damage uh, um, activate when their head deploys which is kind of quote unquote unfair for the opponent, but that kind of evens out the fact that they're getting an entire new body out of the deal or a, you know, a new body in terms of the head and uh, an entire new character, I guess I should say. And you know, you can kind of offset the things that are going on because a lot of times Parsec will pop off and now they can go attack with Parsec and you know, make that a blocker and better set up their next character. And But now they can't do that with a character like Quake because most of the time you're just gonna be like, I'll order it to where it'll deal one damage to your head and the rest of the characters after that, which is pretty insane. And again, you could do that with your own guys too. So if you were playing another character that had uh, Volrath or Parsec, you can kill off your character with the Quake effect and or if your character gets killed off by the Quake effect, you can then also trigger the effect to happen uh, and kill the Parsec as well. And then Parsec will again trigger and kill everybody as well. So it's a, it can be a potentially crazy chain reaction with this card. And again, also with uh, Octone, just to kind of side note for a second, Octone got a little better with that ruling because if Octone kills a character that has, like Kreb, for example, Octone deals two damage to any character that it KOs with his bounty ability. You kill a character with Kreb, you can do two damage to the Kreb and also kill the head as well. So, but jumping back to the card at hand, so this card again, you know, killing a character and, you know, dealing five damage back or whatever, just that damage that you give back to your opponent is definitely very unexpected for, you know, any opponent to uh, definitely articulate. Now, I will say, uh, there aren't a lot of secret actions in this deck, so when you do have this set, they're probably going to assume that it's even the score, so they're definitely going to want to try to precisely kill your Megatron and not overdo it so much that they take that reflect damage back. And the last thing to say about this is keep in mind, this goes in your KO area after you activate it. So if it's set and your opponent used counters espionage to get rid of it, it will go to your scrap pile still, but if you use it and deal damage back to your opponent, it goes to your KO area, so that means it will not go back in circulation to be, for you to be able to draw it again. So of course you have two. Yes, there's potential for you to draw the, the the second one but that's the idea with that by the way gotta take appreciation for this art on the back of villain of spotlight very cool um it's pretty much reminiscent of the uh, playmat that you were able to get at the energon invitational but just having that in card form and having that full art of some of the most powerful decepticons uh you know in the lore in general is uh, definitely very cool and next up for our two us, we have two Cayman Cries. This card is definitely very powerful. One of the best cards in the game, I think. And, you know, if one shall stand, one shall fall is my favorite card in the game. This card has to be within my top 10 for sure. You deal one damage to one of your characters and then two damage to two of your opponents. Or to two, Jesus. I'm making it 
way better than it is. <laughs> Deal two damage to one of your opponent's characters. So, and then it's also a black icon. So unlike one shot stand, one shot fall, you're able to flip this on defense and or on attack. Excuse me, on attack and you know get the pierce as well. And this card is just insane. It also is good to help get you to the next level potentially of your villainous or of your revenge stratagem. So again, if you have you know five uh, damage counters on you, you can play this on your on uh, your Megatron and make him six have put six damage on him and then deal two, two damage to somebody and then also attack and have bold two now so and next up for our one-ups gonna run through all these kind of together we have one hold the line one disassemble one counter espionage one supercharge and one work over time so these are the one ofs that were kind of filler and that made sense as well. Of course, I need some more greens to articulate in the deck. Anytime that you're building any deck, you want to have between like five and seven-ish greens. And with this set, this allows you to have even more. I have some decks that have 10 greens in it. So I have a lot of, um, you know, uh, efficiency of trading cards that I don't need out of my hand for, you know, decent cards or whatever that's relevant for the uh, game state, you know, through my combat flips. But hold the line here, I think it's better in aggressive decks than it is in blue decks because your characters are so fragile when you end up getting into a uh, killing a body and the head pops off you can use this to not take so much damage from the head if pretty much any but uh, one minimum so for kreb for example kreb can have or parsect you know you give them a grenade launcher and supercharge and they can hit you for 12 but they can only take one because you can't take more than the uh, character star card we have disassembles pretty much the new uh, reprocess but it does not get rid of utilities but it's similar to reprocess because it does it's an action that scraps uh, upgrades any upgrade and uh, whenever you scrap in a weapon or armor, the owner draws one card. So it's good to get rid of hollow matter projectors. It's good to get to get rid of, uh, you know, energon axes or whatever they have that's sticking around that you need to get rid of. Counter espionage is a card that's also in the main deck. I'm at five greens with this card. I want to potentially side deck this card. Shout out to Tim T.O. We've been going back and forth on why he doesn't think this card should be main deck right now. But I do think it has some main deck viability in an aggressive deck. Because if I do run into a, uh, you know, deck that's playing secret actions game one, I want to be able to get rid of the. I don't want to just keep getting blown out by their in hostilities and this and that. I want to be able to kind of get rid of one of those or get rid of something to kind of be able to still progress my turns when I do draw this card. And then we have one supercharge. Space is an issue to not be able to play more of these. So the attack buffs in terms of like, you know, reckless charge, leap in the battle, uh, fight for the position, those type of uh, effects are low in this deck. But one supercharge still gets you kind of where you want to go in terms of uh, getting a, a decent attack value out of your characters um, at any point in given time. And of course, it's always on color. This is one of the original aggressive cards in the game. Still a very good card. It does get countered by in hostility. So be careful with this. That's also on top of the reason why I don't have space. It's another reason why I'm not playing so many, even if I could find space, because I don't want to get blown out by in hostilities. I don't need, I mean, it's bad enough the stratagem for revenge is turned off when they have in hostilities, but um, it's a really feel bad when you play this or belligerent to any of those cards and run into it in hostilities. Yes, that's only one card, but it's just something to think about. And then last but not least, we have a uh, work over time in the deck, which is a card I don't have a uh, lot of play time with, but I'm glad to play it in this deck. It was a super, or a super reboot, a system reboot, but I found every time I had system reboot, the other card in my hand was always something that I wanted to play. It was never that I had something that's sort of quote unquote dead in my hand. I was like, ah, I want to get rid of it and draw four new cards. There's a lot of times where I get down to two cards because as you can see, this draw, the draw power in this deck is really low, but I get a good couple of efficient turns of action upgrade, action upgrade. And then I get to a point where I'm really low. And if I have this card in my hand, like two cards in my hand it'll be nice to play this and then at least draw three cards to refill my hand so moving on to the upgrades we're going to show all these at the same time well the well, weapons anyway the weapon count is actually really low and you'll see why once we get to the rest of the deck list now we're playing some of the best weapons in the game uh paralyzer box is to be continued on that front because it is a grenade launcher it does have a uh, white green icon but the green icon has the range tag on it so that means the green icon you are only able to uh, uh, able to pick this up after battle, uh, when you battle with one of your ranged characters. Megatron is ranged in both modes. Quake is also ranged in both modes. So at any time, I'll be able to pick those cards up. Now, Doomshot and Kreb are melee. So if they happen to be battling and you flip this card on attack or defense, you will not be able to pick it up for that green icon. So keep that in mind. But when you do guess the top card of your opponent's deck right, you get plus four attack on the character to the end of the turn. Something to also remember about this card is Sabotage Armaments will get rid of the Paralyzo box, but it will not affect the plus four that the character gets because the plus four is given to the character, not to the card itself. So that's something to definitely keep in mind for this. 
Uh, next up, we have uh, Grenade Wolf. Grenade Launcher, obviously, best weapon in the game still. Definitely holding that title. It's on color. It gives the most attack boost in the game uh, at four. And, um, well, is that the... Yeah, yeah. It gives the most attack boost in the game at four. Definitely the best weapon in the game. And then we have two Fusion Board. Now, Fusion Board is definitely a card to help you push some damage against those blue decks. Uh, the weapon count was actually a little bit lower, but after talking with Tim Teo, uh, me and him... He mentioned that I need more weapons in the deck. And ever since I first built the deck, the deck was actually just four weapons at one point. And the armors are actually just all like um, in uh, abundance, I should say. But uh, needing more weapons, I agreed with. And um, having that second voice to say, yeah, you need more weapons, just reinforced like definitely like, yeah, I know I need more weapons. He's right. Let me go ahead and add more weapons. So again, shout out to Tim Teo, a homie from Malaysia, helping me out with that front. So uh, yeah, two more fusion board and I can potentially side deck another one against blue decks. Very good card. Again, the uh, weapons and armors are actually switched around and you're about to see here in a second. It's kind of weird because I'm so used to playing, you know, nine to 12 ish weapons. But uh, with tanks, you definitely need the armors. And speaking of the armors, we're going to talk about them right now we have three composite armor three erratic or uh in it i can't get it out emergency barricade <laughs> one ghost shield one bastion shield and one increased durability and the one really weird one one improvised shield so talking about improvised shield first it's it, it was crazy for me to when it, when it comes to deck building I look at decks and I've been on the, you know, on record in the past saying you start all your decks off with three piece of tyranny, three improvised shield. Now, to its credit, that's where I did start. But once I started adding the rest of the deck together, you end up getting to 42, 43, 44. And I'm like, man, all right, I got to start making cuts and make cuts where it makes sense. So when it comes to the villain the spotlight, it's greedy for me to want in this deck specifically is greedy for me to want to have eight double oranges eight double oranges sounds really good but in a deck where you're too tall and you want your turns your turns need to be more efficient then you can get away with having an unefficient action slash upgrade turn in a three or four wide deck but in a two wide deck you again you only obviously have two characters so you really need your turns to be as efficient as possible yes it's a um you know double orange that if you draw you can get rid of it for a green but even more so in this deck when you draw an improvised shield it feels really bad because you have to wait i only have five greens in this deck not six or seven you know for what i can fit so it's definitely really hard to try to uh, get it out of your hand when it's just sitting in your hand now i will say i gotta play this card because it has megatron on the art so we officially have Peace Through Tyranny and Improvised Shield on both the double orange cards, which I think is really cool, and they both feature Megatron. So that's definitely very fitting. But, and the other main reason that kind of eased my mind about this is I'm just trying to be greedy and play eight double oranges, you know, play three Improvised Shields, three Peace Through Tyranny, and then two even the score. But at least this allows me to still play six uh, double oranges. So what that just pretty much means is against those decks that are playing, those blue decks that are playing eight double oranges because they're playing Heroic Spotlight or they're playing nine double blues. Uh, be, did I say double oranges? Playing nine double blues because, you know, with Heroic Spotlight, like I was able to fit in the uh, Optimus deck. Just little things like that. At least I have, I'm even the playing field by being at base level in terms of having the six double oranges you're so used to having in your deck. And then what's also nice about this, is just in general, when it comes to the entire deck list, is... You know, drawing hand or uh, improvised shield is going to feel bad, but at least it's only that one. Like, if you draw that one, you know you're only top decking better cards to play throughout the game for the remainder of the game. Well, I guess remainder of your deck cycle until you re reshuffle. And then we have the best armor in the deck, the one that you definitely want to see, composite armor. It gets a little weird sometimes with uh, Doomshot, or not Doomshot, with uh, Quake when you want to flip him back to alt mode. But some, most of the time, the flip... Uh, density is not too crazy in this deck where it really matters but where this card really shines is on the new megatron because with the new megatron his alt mode already says that you deal one damage back to the enemy if you flip an orange composite armor says if you flip a black deal one damage back to the enemy and it falls off after defending not after battle but after defending he has plus one attack and plus three defense dealing two damage back to the enemy with uh megatron's effect is uh, you know along with megatron's effect is very powerful Next up, we have uh, Emergency Barricade. Emergency Barricade kind of follows the same suit as Composite Armor. And the reason why I'm playing Emergency Barricade is because of the fact that it falls off. I don't want to play too many weapons that stay on. I mean, if the Ghost Shield's in the Scrap Pile, I'm probably going to put that on. And I'll probably actually prioritize putting that on Quake, by the way. But putting this on and it falling off lets my Hunker Down have more value. If I have the increased durability and I play it early and I draw Hunker Down, I can only put a weapon or a... Uh, armor on quake and i want to be able to have uh max value and get two armors that's obviously the the best dream that you can have when you play hunger down and that's the reason for playing emergency barricade it does get plus three defense similar to um the composite armor and uh it does scrap um itself after uh defending and then of course we talked about improvised shield uh, one bashing shield we don't need uh two bashing shield in this deck because we are we are playing a uh, disassemble so you still have two cards that get rid of armors if you need to the one ghost shield is really good because of course 
you can cheat this out. One of the first things talked about about this card, you were able to put this on versus play. You're able to put this on your one of your tanks via hunker now, or you can you know just put it on via playing an armor and then playing this. Now that's a lot harder to do because the only armors that stay on are these three. And if you open this, you actually might just legit put this on if you happen to draw the ghost shield. It's gonna be very rare that that happens. I don't see you ever trading ghost shield over for the increased durability because it is an energy pack for you know armor slot and then the bashing shield is probably the only viable card that you want to trade the ghost shield over for so i don't really see you ever doing that but uh looking at this we have 10 armors dank tanks are a deck that you know are one of those unique decks when you build it you actually aren't catering as much to the uh weapons as you do the armors because of course tanks are all about defense but they also still hit very hard so i like the way the icons you know articulate with it you know especially again composite armor um gives you a you know plus a one attack and plus three defense very very strong card i love this whole lineup as a whole very strong again that one improvised shield does look very weird but it makes sense and last but not least, we have uh, for our utilities, one energy pack and two enhanced power cells. Now, to go back to the uh, deck as a whole, this deck list has a very, very low health count. We have Kreb with Decepticon Quake, which is pretty much 10 stars. And then we have Megatron, or 10 health, excuse me. Then we have Megatron, who has 15 health, that's 25. And then we have Doomshot, that makes it 27. Now, technically, since the Kreb gives two health to Decepticon Quake, he's 10. But then you get another two from Kreb himself when he pops out. So that makes it uh, 29. Now, 29 is also still still low hence why we have the one increased durability for the armors and then also two enhanced power cell and the one energy pack now i'm playing two energy one energy pack and two of these because simply put megatron is 11 stars so he's the only character that can have it after he dies this card is dead so if i find this card i'm definitely obviously going to put it on megatron to give him some more survivability and even more important he has 15 health but his uh revenge stratagem for his bold three if i ever i'm not looking forward to getting it but if i end up getting a chance to attack with his bold three he has to have 11 plus damage counters on him so giving him energy pack and putting him at 19 gives him a little bit more room to play around in that last um eight damage range to get that bold three even when he's attacking in his body mode there are some turns where he's actually lived from being in body mode and he stands up and i'm able to flip him back to alt mode and attack with him again with the bold two or bold three and then when they attack him back you know i deal the damage back if i flip an orange etc etc and of course the enhanced power cells can go on any character it's the new uh energy pack pretty much from wave five type masses attack we are trading the orange icon for the black icon and instead of giving plus three health or four health it gives plus three health and again you give that to any character so uh you know if you don't see the energy pack but you see this you put it on megatron still probably and uh in general you just put it on quake and that gives quake at least 13 you know three more health that's going to take the ko him through his three defense so guys that's it for the deck profile i hope you guys enjoyed definitely uh like comment and subscribe on this video if you enjoyed the deck profile it is megatron week look for a game with this version version two of the deck coming up very soon a uh, shout out again to uh tim to carl to sean and to uh, alan who all helped me articulate and uh, have the uh, evolution of this deck come about being a thing it gets a five out of five for direct damage the direct damage that you get from quake every time a character dies from the direct damage that you get every time you have to attack megatron since he has brave and he's dishing one damage back to you uh, those two things in conjunction with magnetic dysfunction rate and Kamian crash and composite armor just deals a lot of direct damage and the AOE damage is actually insane because two characters that both have one health left one character will die for whatever reason and then Quake will trigger and kill that next character because it had one health left and then Quake will trigger again and deal one damage to everybody again so Quake is very reckless in a sense and uh, his alt mode is very fitting being that he will definitely be your last character on the battlefield so again direct damage we will give this a five when it comes to uh, flip density, this deck's flip density is a two out of five because you're not really, you're only flipping cake, cake. <laughs> We're flipping the Decepticon cake, guys. Uh, you're only flipping uh, Decepticon Quake probably once, or well, excuse me, twice throughout the game, but it's like really early and then really late when you flip him. And then you're flipping Megatron at a very precise time in the game, so I think you have to be careful when you flip him, if you're able to even flip him, because again, I did say sometimes uh, Megatron taps, and he never sees the light of day again because he actually gets KO'd before I'm able to untap him, of course, against other aggressive decks. In terms of this deck's raw battle, uh, battle power i would say you know i say battle power literally mean when it's attacking i would say it's a four out of five being that the revenge stratagem 
allows you to have a weapon without actually having a weapon is very strong. So you can play a utility or an upgrade for your turn, as I said in the beginning, and you know, not be hard pressed to have a weapon. Or even if you do have a weapon, you can save it for Quake and then use this revenge as your weapon throughout the game and have that bold and knock characters out. And then also, of course, his body bolt side, which is very powerful. Plus two doesn't seem like a lot, but you know what, being at seven attack, in conjunction with the bold and then if you do also have a weapon to put on him he's hitting for a lot of damage and whoever he's attacking probably is getting ko'd or damn near and then quake is no joke himself he already has five attack sporting five attack to start and then when he's the only character on the battlefield he gets plus two attacking himself so they gain attack within themselves which is very valuable and then of course that's not including your battle deck that's buffing them up as well so i definitely want to give this deck a four out of five it's an aggressive deck so i would hope that it's a four out of five any aggressive deck that you build should be on your ranking system a four out of five if it's an aggressive deck otherwise it's you know not an aggressive deck <laughs> Next up, we're going to talk about defense. How well is this deck on defending? That was kind of um, iffy. I guess if you're, we're going to talk about against aggressive decks, if I'm articulating in, in general, if I were to go into a tournament expecting an orange field, this deck defends pretty well. I'm going to give it a 3.5 out of 5. I want to give it a, I want to give it a 4, but I mean, they both have 3 defense, so you're not one-shotting any of these characters in the early turns. So it's going to actually take some effort to get rid of these characters, especially when you have your armors on it. Um, you know what? Actually, I take it back. I got to give it a four because when you put the armors on your character, it really throws up your opponent's math. And though they might be hitting with their characters that have bold and this and that, they're not getting the damage that they normally get in versus characters that only have two defense or things like that. They have three defense plus one of the you know composite armor or emergency barricade gives them six. So that really throws off the math and actually helps your character survive even more. So I would definitely say in terms of defending for an aggressive deck, that's pretty good to have three defense to start plus the way the armors work for the deck. So I got to give that a four out of five as well. All right, guys, and for a draw power, when it comes to draw power, this deck sadly gets a one out of five, and it would get a zero out of five if I did not play work overtime, but it gets a one out of five because I at least have one card in the deck that helps facilitate and uh, fill my hand back up, and uh, I probably should give it a 0.5 out of five, but the draw power is very weak in this deck, but because it's a two tall deck there will be turns where you won't play an action and upgrade there will be turns where you'll play an action and then you'll, again you'll use the revenge as your weapon for the turn quote unquote if you don't have a good upgrade to play or whatever the case is or you might just play an upgrade but it might be, not be a, a buffing upgrade but because you have this as your weapon it's fine uh etc so the draw power is weak but the fact that you're too tall is something that um, is very strong it was always been strong because against three and four wide decks they don't have as much time to set up their characters so when it comes to time by the time you're tapped out they're not going to be able to set up their best guy the way they really want to to get their good swing in they're gonna have to be forced to attack kind of prematurely and then you get to stand up and kind of hit them on their weakest spots you know on the battlefield uh, next up i want to talk about uh i guess i can make this a category in uh survivability this deck survivability i would say is definitely uh probably a a 3.5 only because uh, megatron is so reckless you have to continuously attack in the megatron quake is so reckless because it deals damage to everybody you do have an energy pack you do have the enhanced power cells so it's like a 3.5 three 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 to 3.5 five ish maybe a four um you know depending on how you build the deck but definitely with its survivability is very nice to be able to keep megatron alive as long as possible and get that damage uh clap back at your opponent all right guys so as i go along and i do more deck profiles i'll add more sections if you guys have any sections of uh weaknesses and strengths that i that you think i should talk about that should be added i think attacking and defending survivability direct damage and draw power is a good five to start with if you guys have any other categories to add comment down in the comment section below um, i can't think of any more off the top of my head but as i continuously add this section to my deck profile section i will you know absolutely uh, potentially include some of the ones that you guys suggest but guys that's gonna do it for me for this deck profile well oh you know what i take that back i think i have one more section to talk about and i think it probably the most important one when it comes to building a deck and this matters uh i guess this matters more if you're a competitive player because you have two different um realms to hit on besides you know casual fun play and competitive when it comes to the competitive sense that's going to be to be continued i did have a match against a sky shadow deck it actually had a really good sky shadow matchup because for one both of my characters are autobots so or <laughs> both of my characters are not autobots so i will not take the three damage when sky shadows combined and with the fact that quake's effect is like it is when you put damage on both of the pieces and i'm talking about against the aggressive sky shadow anyway when you put damage on both the pieces it's um very easy to like I had a situation where like I got the the tank to nine and the plane at eight. So I would kill the plane and then I would also, or no, I had the plane, I take that back, I had the tank at eight and the plane at seven. So I killed the, the plane and then dealt one damage to the rest of it. This is like, I think, uh, 
uh, yeah, the, to his other two characters. And so that put one damage on the tank. He combined in a Sky Shadow, got an attack in, but then when I killed, or when I played like a uh, Magray or something like that, I easily was able to kill the um, Sky Shadow tank as well. And then, you know, had forced them to go into Ominous a lot earlier. So uh, it definitely has a, actually a really good Sky Shadow matchup, especially against the blue version. Any control Sky Shadow decks you see are not hitting you as fast, or excuse me, not killing you as fast, especially with three defense. You're definitely going to live for a while and should definitely live to see the light of day outside of them going crazy, belligerence, grenade launcher turn, which some control perceptive decks play. Um, you know, it definitely has uh, some solidity there. Now, in terms of competitive viability out of five, I'm going to give this a three, and that's too to continue because it is still too tall. I'm worried about aggressive decks, which are the, you know, the biggest um, threat right now, as they usually always are at the beginning of any format. So at the same time, it still is four characters, and also you can't attack anybody else. You can't attack Quake until you attack Megatron. So I'm hoping Megatron can, like, take down characters and the fact that uh, enemy aggro decks are also fragile. You'll be well, they're as they're more fragile than I am anyway. You'll be able to kill their characters and do a chain reaction of your AOE damage with Quake, and hopefully that evens things out. Because most games, I've said this in the past, no matter how cool your deck is, most games always still come down to head versus head anyway, or one character versus one character. If we're talking about wave one through four, so that's something to keep in mind. So I'm hoping this deck can live up to uh, my expectations, and I'm gonna try to run it through a gauntlet of uh, some of the uh, better decks in the format and just decks in general, and see how. It or perform and that'll give you some better education if you would like to build this deck or if you have some other ideas for the deck how you would like to change it speaking of anything you want to change also down comment down in the comment section below if you have any ideas for things you could change in this deck uh power punch was consideration for this deck as well over the uh fusion board but again i'm worried about uh cards like in hostilities that's one of the best cards um, in the game i think now and uh just one of the strongest cards coming out of wave five and i don't want to have a turn where i have my stratagem with a good bold two on it and then play power punch and then attack with my uh Megatron and get blown out by in hostilities. I guess you don't have to play both of those cards in that turn if you think they probably have in hostilities, but I just don't want to have any of my cards really getting blown out besides the strategy, which was free. So um, that's the idea with that. But guys, without further ado, I'm going to get up out of here. Expect a game coming up with this deck later on this week, and I will catch you guys in my next video. You guys have a great day and or night when you, whenever you're catching this video. You guys be safe out there. Things are starting to open back up, but you guys still be safe and be very cautious. You guys know what it is. This is your homie S. Dot heading out. Peace. Whoa.